Oh, hey guys, this is Trenchy back again to bring you another video, and this time we are continuing Spidey July um, with episode 2 of this series I'm doing. Um, today we will be discussing season 1, episode 1 of the 90 Spider Man series that ran from 1994 to 98, and that is Night of the Lizard. Um, it's directed by Bob Richardson, um, written by Gary Conway, who also wrote for the comics and co-created The Punisher, as well as scripting The Death of Gwen Stacy. Um, we also have Stan Berkowitz in here. He worked on a bunch of like uh, Justice League cartoons, um, Static Shock. He worked on a bunch of comet stuff. And then we have John Semper, who worked on things like Fraggle Rock, Clifford, um, a lot of the cartoons as well. Um, Gary Conway also worked on Batman, the animated series, so th these guys knew what they were doing. Um, very successful shows they have worked on. Um, we have a very good um, voice cast here with Ed Asner voicing... Um, what's his name? J. Jonah Jameson. We have Hank Azaria vo voicing Eddie Brock. We have, uh, I believe this is this dude's name, Christopher Daniel Barnes, who also voiced Prince Eric in The Little Mermaid. Uh, he voices Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man. So, and, um, we also have Joseph Campella voicing Dr. Kirk Connors and the Lizard. Um, now this episode is a decent episode, um, a lot of horror vibes here, a lot of classic horror. Uh, we start out with two guys working in the sewer, um, they are then approached by the lizard who is, uh, crowded in shadow. They keep him crowded in shadow towards the end where they show his, uh, full appearance. Um, which w would work very well, but you already show him off in the intro, so it's kind of like why but still it's a cool attempt um i really like the look of the lizard in this his red eyes really stand out um really sent a pulse of fear just those big bright red eyes um plus i like how he's still wearing the lab coat it gives me a classic monster vibe like universal monsters and just old good old uh monster movie vibe here um so yeah, we get the, the two guys run out of the sewer, they're getting into the truck, the one guy walks too close to uh, another um, pothole, the lizard reaches up, grabs him by the leg, the other guy tries to grab his hand, he's wearing gloves, and the dude is pulled down into the sewer. Um, the other guy starts driving very uh, hectically down the road. Um, and we see Spider-Man swing in, and I like the swing shots in these. I always thought they were, uh, made very well for the 90s, uh, very fluid. And, um, Spider-Man jumps on the truck, and we get to see a little bit of his personality. He's, like, uh, joking with the guy, messing with him while also being serious, like, stop, you know, stop driving. Uh, the dude is going crazy. He's seeing the red eyes of the lizard. Um, he is losing control of the wheel. He drives off the bridge into the ocean. Spider-Man saves him. Um, pretty much mocks the dude and uh, uh, blows it off as uh, this dude's crazy. Um, later on, we see at the uh, Daily Bugle, uh, J. Jonah Jameson's there, Robert Robbie Robertson's there, and uh, Eddie Brock, who will all become important characters later down the line. Um, they're discussing the lizard, and J. Jonah puts a bounty on it. Peter's a little sarcastic about it, but he decides to do it because he wants to help his Aunt May out with the bills, and decides to go hunt down the lizard. Uh, it's cool that we have Eddie Brock here from the start, because we all know um, what he comes down the line, so I like that he's here, and we get to see his growth. Um, he gets a lot of development in this episode. Him and Peter go head to head, and um, it's really great to see um, his conflicts with not only Peter but Spider-Man, and because he doesn't know their 
the same person yet, so they have separate conflicts, so you can really see his hate for Spider-Man and Peter grow in this episode, which P uh, Peter as slash Spider-Man is kind of, well, Spider-Man especially is very rude to Brock. Uh, yes, Brock does do some, try to do some shady things here, but in the end, he's just doing his job and does not need that much of ridicule. It's definitely Peter kind of, like, taking out his hatred of Brock and, like, really taking advantage of the fact that he's Spider-Man so he gets to fuck with Brock a little bit. Yes, he's doing it for a good reason and trying to help out his friend, but he's also, you know, I think he is taking that thing that, like, yeah, I also get to take revenge on this person that I'm, I don't like, you know? Um, so that's definitely there. That's an interesting dynamic. But as we go on, uh, Peter goes to approach Kirk Connors. He is joined by this uh, girl named my my Whitman, I believe. Forgot her name. Um, I don't remember her from the comics. Uh, she was kind of forgettable in this episode. Um, but we have the cool scene where he gets the spider sense. He senses something is wrong in the laboratory. And we get a cool score. All the score in this is pretty good. But we get a cool score. And we get some, we get a background change and they close in on his face and they show like some flashing lights in the background. And I really like that showing that his spider sense is going off. I really liked how they established that. I thought that was very cool. Um... So yeah, he, uh, we have, um, we have our first encounter, the lizard is stealing something, again, he's uh, shrouded in shadows from Kirk Connor's lab, and he goes to the window, um, Peter almost goes after him, but then he stops to, um, he stops to comfort the girl that's with him because she starts freaking out. But he almost goes off full Spider-Man after him, uh, which was a very good scene. Um, then we have, you know, just more looking around in, in the sewers. And he goes to Kurt Connor's house. And we have this cool scene where the lizard is looking in through Kurt's window. At his, at his old family, and uh, they skip to a jump scare, and we think, oh, they see the lizard, but no, it's actually Spider-Man. Um, we have a, we have a little encounter there, you know, the wife's like, I'm not gonna let you hurt him, and stuff, and Spider-Man's like, I'm not here to hurt him, and I just want to save him, you know, he doesn't understand her same person yet. Um, we have some flashbacks where Peter used to work with Kurt. Um, on the experiments, and um, it's really not enough though, because I wish this was kind of a later episode, because I do think we should have had more seeing Kurt Connor Connors as a human and his interactions with Peter and his interactions with his family and his son to kind of get to know him better before we uh, uh, transform him into the villain. So it is weird seeing this as the straight up pilot episode. But, um, they do, they do try at least to set up Kirk Connors a little bit. Um, we then have a, a fight. Uh, now this series was heavily censored. I do believe there was only mm, supposed to be one punch thrown in the series, but I think I'm going to debunk that now. I don't know if that one punch is supposed to be thrown by Spider-Man because I, uh, there was a punch in this episode and I'm pretty sure there's more punches down the line. So, um, yeah. But uh, we get some throwing. Uh, Spider-Man dodges from side to side. He uses some web play. We get him thrown through. Uh, Spider-Man gets thrown through a treehouse and he gets thrown a trike at him. So he takes some damage, man. Uh, the lizard takes off into the sewer with the with the wife. He eventually ends up taking the wife, and then Spider-Man ends up having to go down after him. He finds uh, the one dude from earlier locked up because the lizard was using him because he was an electrician to build the device. 
Um, other cool things here, we got Spider-Man using some gadgets. We have a Spidey light. He has a light on his belt that he uses to see in the store, which I found really cool. And we get to see more look at the web shooters, which I do prefer over him just having webs. Yes, I love the Sam Raimi trilogy, but I prefer it when he has to make the webs and make gadgets like this because it really shows the intellect of Spider-Man because he's one of the... Uh, one of the smartest characters in Marvel. Um, literally in the comics, he he's not on the same level, but he could be on the same level as like Tony and uh, Reed Richards and all those other smart guys. Bruce Banner. Um, but yeah, Peter is pretty ingenuitive and uh, very inventive. Not only does he have his powers, but he has his mind as well. Um, and then we get a lot of dialogue, you know, Spider-Man monologues a lot, and it's it's okay, kind of boring, but um, yeah. So we get to the end, we we figure out what the lizard's trying to do. He's trying to turn everybody into lizards like him. Um, he thinks he's the next uh, generation. And that um, all the other mutants, all the other people should become like him and evolve. Um, kind of like Magneto's, Magneto's plan in the first X-Men movie. So, um, we also see that Kurt Connors, a little bit Kurt Connors is in there and he's, he fights a little bit to come out. Um, so we do see some hesitantness. But I love what the actor doing the lizard doubles the voice because sometimes it's very soft and then other times it is eloquent and soft but it has like this like growl to it and this like ominous foreboding to it and I really like it like this dark tone. Um, so I thought that was very well done. So we we get the uh, final fight between Spider-Man and the lizard. We get some tail swinging action. We get some webbing action. Um. In the end, uh, the lizard lunges at Spider-Man. We get to see some good, um, creepy uh, saliva foam coming from his mouth. And his mouth's open, so it's like he's going to eat him. They go into the water. Uh, I believe the lizard throws a punch under the water. That's what it looks like. And uh, the device ends up going on. All this time, Spider-Man's monologuing about how they used to be friends and the crazy that he's fighting his friend who is a lizard now. Um, really unneeded, but okay. <laughs> it's fine. And, um, yeah. In the end, uh, the lizards turn back to Kirk Connors. We see Eddie Brock approaching J. J Jonah Jameson with J. Jonah Jameson to Kirk Connors' house. He's going to prove that Kirk Connors is a lizard. Turns out Kirk Connors back to human now, so Eddie Brock gets embarrassed. Of course, um, really planting those seeds for him later on in the series. And, um, yeah, we get uh, Peter gets the picture, you know, and he was able to hand the pictures in, so he gets the money. And um, he's able to pay off the bills. Aunt May kind of calls him a little bit for going into sewers and stuff. And then we get them where he says that, like, you know, me and Spider-Man are bonded more than you know, and uh, that's never going to change. But you will never know that, you know. Oh, no. This was a decent episode. I, I liked what they were trying to do. I liked the story of the lizard. I do believe it should have been later down the line, but, yeah. It was an okay pilot. Um... Some of the dialogue was cheesy, some of it I enjoyed, some of it I didn't, but the, the fighting was good and the story was actually a decent storyline. And I do like the old school horror vibes that came off of this, which seems to happen a lot in the series, which I really enjoy. Um, so yeah, I give this episode uh, a 5. It was a decent episode, a little mediocre, but i say it was average, a uh, solid, solid episode. Um, I'm going to find out what's the next episode of this, and we're going to dive right in. Hopefully it's on Disney+, Plus. if not, I can watch it through other means. 
But yeah, um, because I know there's new plus doesn't have all the episodes, but yeah. I hope you guys have a good day. Stay frosty. This is uh, Trenchy signing off. Beep up boop.